Okay, so today we're going to talk about capability and uh, how it uh, compares to tolerance limits. And often in, you know, like manufacturing, for example, you, you have some kind of process producing an output or, you know, some kind of product or whatever, and we take measurements on it. And often there are some kind of limits that we want to compare them to. So, for example, you know, you may have a, a process generating, you know, some a product or some measurements here. And, you know, this is a generalized distribution of what that might look like. And you want to compare it to some upper and lower specification limit. And usually these limits, these upper and lower spec limits, are based on some kind of engineering tolerance levels. So you know what kind of is the maximum variability that can be allowed. And then we want to really compare to what the process itself is producing. So we want to understand how this distribution of measures here will compare to this kind of uh, range inside here. Okay. So one of the key ways to, to do that is through capability measures. And let's go through some examples here. It's best shown through example. So, you know, one of the most common measures is called CPK, and there's also a, another one called PPK. And the difference between those two is uh, based on how you calculate that variability, that, you know, plus or minus three sigma level. So typically the, what we're looking for here is uh, plus or minus three sigma, because that'll capture, you know, a little bit more than 99% of the data values. So the CPK or PPK is all determined on whether uh, or not this is a, based on short-term or long-term variability, the sigma level. And that's actually another video that we'll discuss there. But right now, we can just look at uh, them interchangeably. And here we have an example of a process type. So for example, let's say this is a generalized distribution of some output. And you can see that it's pretty well centered on target. So this would garner, you know, I'm not showing the calculations here, but a CPK of two. And the characteristic here, it's on target and low variability. So really what I want to show here is how this value changes uh, when the different parameters here change as well. So for example, in this one, you know, you have a process, again, that's on target, but you can see that it's taking up the entire specification range. So that you know, plus or minus three sigma range, you know, 99 plus percent of the values are actually taking up the whole range. So this actually garners a CPK value or a PPK value of one. So the performance is a little bit lower here because, you know, even though we're on target, we've kind of, you know, ballooned out a little bit here to the specification limits. The next one is interesting because this has the same variability as this first one here but its capability is just the same as this one here, okay? The reason is, is that even though the variability is good, it's really off target. So this is a good point to bring up here. When you're talking about a process capability, you're really trying to optimize two things. One is, you know, on target, you know, how far it is off target, on, on or off target, and the other one is the variability. So you're actually working on trying to optimize two factors here uh, instead of just, you know, necessarily one. The next one, you know, here we have an ex incredibly low variability process. You can see it's very, very far away from target. So even though this one has a great capability index, okay, it's pretty darn far off target, and chances are that the risk level here is still pretty high because it's just bordering on this upper specification limit. So you got to be a little bit careful with these, you know, these index measures because they can show very good capability, but they can still be in a high risk zone depending on, on where it is in relationship to the target. The next one here, uh, we have incredibly high variability and uh, the variability is actually going beyond the upper and lower spec limits, which would be producing, let's say, non-conforming product. So you can see that the measure here is less than one. So yeah, the process is on target, and uh, you know the process incredibly variable, and it's actually falling outside the spec range. So this variability uh, 
gives us a CPK or a PPK of 0 0.8. And the last one is uh, kind of middle of the road. You know, we've got uh, pretty good targeting, uh, a little bit more variability than some of the other ones we've seen. And this has a CPK of 1.33. Now, you know, if you really don't, um, you know, a lot of people just really don't understand CPK or PPK very well. And a good way to supplement these kind of values is really with a picture, okay? So doing a visual analysis will definitely show you where to improve your process. For example, you know, it doesn't really tell you between this number and this number here which is off, right? I mean, they have the same CPK value, but one has an issue with variability and one has a, an issue with off-target distance. So it's really, really important to not, not just look at the CPK value, but also look at a picture of the measurements to see where they actually fall within those specification limits and target. So even if you don't understand this, this part here, the CPK or PPK part, you know, if you draw a nice vis visualization of the output, that'll really help tell you uh, how things are uh, running out there. Okay, I hope that helped, and uh, good luck with your process, and uh, hope you have high process capability.